Okay, this is going to be the second lesson on Pythagorean Theorem, and we're going to look at some different sort of applications, some problem solving, some different kinds of questions. Um, and again, you're going to notice that a lot of these are um, modeled after EQAO kind of questions. Again, this year, which right now is 2021, we're not going to be doing EQAO. Um, in the future, I'm sure they will be doing it again. But... Um, you know, these are still some interesting questions and there's some good uh, sort of strategies that we're going to talk about. And uh, and this is something that will come up in grade 10 and grade 11 where we explore um, applications of Pythagorean theorem. OK, so that's what this lesson is going to be all about. But it does all still come down to the same thing as the last lesson, how we use Pythagorean theorem to find side lengths. And if we go back to... Um, the previous lesson where we introduced the idea of Pythagorean theorem, we talked about how it all comes down to really whether you are looking for a, the longest side or one of the shorter sides, right? So every triangle is going to have three sides. One of them's longest, the other two are shorter. And which one are you solving for? So we're still going to take that approach. Um, we're still going to sort of solve things the same way. But uh, some of these questions, at least, are multiple choice. So, uh, you know, again, you, you can use that multiple choice to narrow down the answers, right? To think about what's possible, what's not possible. So let's get into this. A wire is attached from the top of a 12-meter pole to a spot on the ground 7 meters away from the base of the pole, as shown below. Now, something that we want to notice here, there's your right angle. So across from that is the longest side. And this is something that we've seen before. You've seen, um, you know, a telephone pole or a, an electricity pole that um, has some kind of wire attached. Not usually actually attached at the top. It might be attached further down. But that doesn't matter for this question, obviously. So um, it makes sense that the wire will be longer than the other two sides. Well, if I think about that, right away can't i eliminate a as an option because a has a wire that's shorter than one of the other sides and that doesn't make sense and this again is one of the nice things about um multiple choice questions that you can often eliminate some of the uh answers as possibilities right okay so how are we going to do this? Well, remember from yesterday, if we are, or from the last lesson, uh, that we have to decide whether we're finding the longest side or we already know the longest side. In this case, we're finding the longest side. So I'm going to call it W for wire, which means I'm adding the other two sides. I have to square everything and take the square root. So I'm going to do all of that on my calculator. 12 squared is 144. 7 squared. And again, you might know some of these. If you do, it'll just speed things up. 144 plus 49 Take the square root of 193 and I get 13.89 or 13.9. So this is one option of how to do this question. Um, and this says, which of the following is the closest? So that would be 14. But another option, if you um, forgot the equation or forgot the formula, or if you just noticed this, you might be able to speed things up. Notice that 19 is 12 plus 7. So this question is trying to trick you <laughs> into thinking that the answer is just add up the other two sides. But that doesn't make any sense because if I added up 12 and 7 to get 19... That would be in a straight line. And this is a triangle. So it doesn't make sense to add them up, right? We have to, this is why we've talked so much about how you have to square everything and take the square root. 
that's the relationship. So that's not going to work. So I also could, if I, if I was, you know, really, um, notice that and really thinking about these relationships, I could notice that it's not going to be 19 because that you don't just add the two other sides. And then it's also not going to be bigger than 19. It can't be 28. Uh, I'm not really even sure why that answer is there. That might just be a random, but it's not going to be 28 um, because that's just huge. There's no way that this wire could be 28 meters. Um, it's, that's just too long, but that's a tricky thing to do. So I'm not suggesting that you try to sort of work through that and think about what makes sense. Uh, I do think that um, using Pythagorean theorem and actually calculating the answer is your safest bet. Um, but again, often we can sort of look at the answers and, and eliminate some of them as a possibility, if, if not all of them. And um, uh, the other thing I want to say about this, again, as I said, we're not doing EQAO, but it's, it's an interesting thing that EQAO will often put these kinds of answers that look like they could be right because 12 plus 7 is 19. So it looks like it might be the right answer. And EQAO will often do that. They'll put like common mistake answers in as the options. So you do have to be a little bit careful when you're doing multiple choice that you aren't just kind of... Uh, selecting the first answer that comes up that you are making sure that you've completed every step of the question uh, to come up with the correct answer. Okay. So something to watch out for. Um, but in this case, you know, you can absolutely best thing to do is just use Pythagorean theorem to solve it. And then we notice that 13.9 is almost 14. So that's the correct answer. Uh, another multiple choice two square gardens are shown below a welcome banner extends from corner of garden a to corner of garden b uh, and it all of that is shown in the diagram this is a bit of a strange question but again this comes directly from eqao that's why this is here so we are looking for the length of the banner so i could call this side length x I could call it B, but that would be a little bit confusing because that's garden B. <laughs> so I'm going to call it X and we're going to try to find that length. Again, if I look at the different options, um, it's not obvious which ones are not possible. It looks like five is less than the other two sides, but these are not side lengths. These are areas right? That's an area, not a side length. So that's a little bit tricky. Um, now five isn't the right answer. That is too small, but be a little bit careful. Again, this question is really, um, tricky in how it's being asked, uh, because it's giving you the area of the gardens. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, I, I we're, we'll go through this question and, and solve it the sort of normal way that we would solve this question or, or, or a, a good way of looking at this question. But just so you know, this is a very typical diagram of Pythagorean theorem. It's a very common way that, again, EQAO would ask a question like this. Um, and it, it shows this common um, demonstration of what Pythagorean theorem kind of means. Um but that, I don't know that that's all that helpful to us, quite frankly. So let's see if we can break this down and figure it out. Uh, at, again, I'm looking for the longest side. So X will be the square root of the other two sides added together and both of them squared. So I just called them A and B because they were already labeled that way. Um, a squared and B squared, these are lengths. We are given areas. So again, that's different, but that's still the relationship that we want to use because we're looking for the longest side. So we have to add them. Okay. The reason why this one's different is because I'm not doing now, hold on. Don't write this down. I'm not doing 72 squared. Um, 
because 70, that would mean it's the side length. But it's not the side length. It's already been squared. So it's just 72 and 25. Okay, so again, this is a bit tricky, um, but now that you've seen it once, hopefully you can recognize it when you see it again in the future, if you see it again in the future. Uh, and that's the idea, that it's giving you the area, whereas all the other questions were giving us a side length, so you had to square it. This one is already squared. 72 plus 25 is 97. Square root of 97 is 9.8. I would just do that on my calculator and get 9.8. Again, it says which is the closest. So that's pretty close to 10. So that's your answer. 97 is way too big, but look at how it shows up in the question, right? Or in, in, in our solution, 97 was an answer that did show up. And so if you really had no idea how to solve this question, you might just say, well, what if I add 72 and 25 and you get 97, you say, oh, well, that has to be the right answer because it, you know, it showed up. But again, EQAO is kind of tricky that way where they, the other answers that they put are, um, are there to sort of almost trick you, right? So just be careful for that. All right, we've got two more examples. Again, these are very common kinds of questions that we see in EQAO. Um, so this, this one comes directly from an EQAO test from a previous year, and it's got a lot of steps to it. Uh, but there's, um, if, if you were to solve this the the sort of straightforward way, it might feel like there's a ton of steps and it might really kind of feel intimidating. But uh, I think this is one of those examples where we can kind of narrow things down and realize which ones are the wrong answers and which ones uh, are possible answers. Okay, so this is a good example of that. So it gives us a diagram of a house uh, from the front and asks us to find the total height of the house. So that's the height from the very top to the very bottom. So right away, if this height is five, three cannot be the correct answer because all the way to the top is bigger than three. It's bigger than five, right? So we know that that is not the right answer. You might even be able to guess that seven isn't the right answer because that just looks too small, but I wouldn't go that way yet. I would be a little bit more cautious and let's do some math first and see if we can figure, figure out some more details before we start guessing. But you know, it, you know, if you were writing a test, and you weren't sure how to solve this question, I would take a minute to think about which answers you can eliminate. And then if you had to guess, guess, right? That's the one of the benefits of multiple choices. You do uh, have a chance of guessing at the right answer. So um, from there, what are we going to do next? Well, we already know this length, but we don't know this length. So if we can find that part, we could add them together to get the whole height of the house. So that means I need to find this length and I just have to start picking away at some of the uh, information that we're given to figure this out. And again, this is Pythagorean theorem. So that's what we're going to use to solve this. So eventually we should get to a point where we're using Pythagorean theorem. The next part of this is that I have to see, well, if this is my right triangle, and that's my right angle. In fact, it even gives us the right angle on the other side, but same thing. Um, and I'm given that side length and I know we're trying to find that side length, but what we don't know is this side length, but you may have already recognized, you may already have uh, figured this out. These little tick marks are telling me that this length and this length are the same. 
and they have to add up to 12. And this is tricky. Some people are very good at this kind of just naturally. It just makes sense. And other people, it takes some time to start making sense of this. But this is a good skill to have. This is something that moving forward um, is going to help in, in some of the other stuff that we do in this course. And in, again, in grade 10 and grade 11. So, you know, this is something that's worth spending some time thinking about. Um, if the whole length is 12, okay, and it's split into two equal parts each of those has to be 12 divided by 2 which is 6 right so this is 6 and this is 6 which means that we have a shape okay a triangle Oops, that one didn't work. Here we go. Okay, we've got a triangle that has a side length here of 6 and here of 9. And this is the one that we're trying to find. That's the same as that height, which will help give us the height of the entire house. And as now we can see, that's Pythagorean theorem. So again, we could call that X. And so X is going to be, we already know the longer side. So again, going back to Pythagorean theorem, are we adding or subtracting? If we know the longest, then we have to subtract to find the shorter side. So it's going to be nine minus six, but we also have to square everything and take the square root. And again, use your calculator. 9 squared is 81. 6 squared is 36. 81 minus 36 is 45. So this is the square root of 45. Which is 6.7. Rounded, right? Approximately. Now, 6.7 is close to 7, so you might think the answer is 7, but that's just the top part, and this question is asking about the entire house, and this is, again, why EQAO is so tricky, and they try to trick you with these answers, which doesn't feel fair, I know. Um, but it's better that we sort of point that out and learn about it and figure out that that's what's happening, right? And so it, some of these, these questions really is about reading carefully and making sure you fully understand what the question is asking. The height of the house is the whole height. So if I think of this as about 7, and this part is 5, then 5 plus 7, the height... will be 5 plus, if we do 6.7, and again, you know, just do that on your calculator, 5 plus 6.7, 11.7, whoops, which is almost 12. It's closer to 12 than it is to 10, so that's the right answer, okay? Um, or you could just in your head think about 5 plus 7 because 6.7 is almost 7. 5 plus 7 is 12, right? You might not have to actually use your calculator to do that, uh, but that's how you would do it. So the answer 3, um, I don't know why that's there, but that was one we could eliminate very quickly. The answer 7, we talked about it. It's there because that's almost 7, but it's not the right answer, okay? Why do you think the answer 10 is there? I think because some people would just double five and say, oh, well, it looks about double. So maybe it's five, maybe it's, you know, five times two or five and five, which is 10, but it turns out that's not right. So often these questions are not that easy where you can just double something and you're done. This is a Pythagorean theorem question. So we did have to do a fair bit of work, even though it's multiple choice. Um, we still had to do a fair bit of work and a fair bit of thinking about the diagram and the measurements in order to figure out the answer to this. Okay, we got one more, and again, this one is a bit of a tricky one, but it, this one is directly from EQAO, like the others. Um, so it's something that's good to look at and good to think about, and it does really, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice kind of problem that we have to solve and we have to think through, okay? So it, it does um, tap into our problem-solving part of our brain, right? 
All right, so Andrew's walking his dog from his house to the park. Determine the total distance Andrew will travel if he walks his dog uh, along the dark lines in the diagram below. Show your work. So he has to walk. So here's his house and here's the park. And he can't walk directly, which makes sense because, you know, there might be buildings or, or whatever in the way. So he can walk, I suppose, along this road or sidewalk or whatever it is. And then maybe there's a shortcut uh, where he can walk diagonally. Um, and this is something where moving forward in the future, there will be questions that might compare. What if he walked all the way to the corner and then all the way down? And how much shorter would it be if he walked directly or something like that? Like these are all other things we could explore. But in this question, it's more straightforward. It's just figure out how long the path is, the dark line path. So there's two parts to this. And hopefully that kind of jumps out at you. There's this part and this part. And we're going to solve for their lengths separately and then add them together to get the total distance. Okay, so let's start with the easier of the two, which is this straight part, okay? And then we'll find the diagonal part and then add them together. For the straight part, this is similar to in the last example where sometimes this is something that people find very, some people find very easy and straightforward. They just notice it and some people don't. So I think it's important that you kind of think about whether like how easy this feels to you. And um, if it's tricky, then it's something that you're going to have to spend some more time thinking about and coming up with some specific strategies about how to do it. OK. But here's how you here's how I would approach this question and, and whether you think about it uh, exactly the same way that I think about it or you just kind of do it without really even thinking about what you're doing uh, this is still the thinking that's kind of required so this whole length is 1100 but it's split into two parts one of those parts is 500 the other part we don't know and that's the length that we want to know so if this whole thing is 1100 whoops but we already know what f one part of it is then the other part is going to be 1100 minus that 500 which is 600 okay and again you could just do that on your calculator or that might be something you can do in your head and again that depends on everybody on their own right but that's how you would figure that out I know that this length plus this length has to give me the total. So 500 plus something has to give me 1100. So that something turns out to be 600. Okay. So this one is 600 and we're talking meters here. So I've got that part. Now I have to find the other part. And when we're looking for something that we don't know what it is, it's really useful to give it some kind of name, some kind of, um, you know, indicator or whatever. And we often call those variables and we often use X, but you can obviously use whatever you want. OK. And another good strategy can be to redraw a part of the diagram off to the side. So notice that now I'm I'm talking about this triangle here. So I just drew just that triangle on its own. Instead of worrying about the entire diagram, I'm only worrying about the triangle. And I know that this is X and that's what I'm trying to find. I know this is 500 because it's given right there. And what about this length? What's that? Well, that's 900. It's given right there. This length on this side is the same as that length on that side. So I know that 
and this one's 900. And now I can see that this is Pythagorean theorem because I'm looking for a side length in a right triangle. I'm looking for the longest side, so I have to add up the other two. And in Pythagorean theorem, you've got to square everything and take the square root. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 500 squared plus 900 squared. That's going to give me a big number, really big. You don't even have to write this down. If you can enter all of this into your calculator all at once, then go ahead and do it. This looks like 1 million. 60,000. So I'm just counting the zeros there, or you, you don't even have to worry about exactly what number that is. You can just write it down. Take the square root of one zero six and then four zeros, and we get 1029 or about 1030. We can round that to 1030. That's fine. Oops. Okay, um, we don't have to get too exact here. And that's not finished though, because that's just that diagonal part. We have to add that. So the total distance is the 600 that we walked across plus the 1030 that we walked diagonally. And again, using your calculator, add those together and we get 1630 meters, just over one and a half kilometers. And if this was an EQA question, there would probably be like a blank space where you'd put your answer. I'm going to do therefore statement. Therefore, Andrew must walk uh, 1600 or 1630 meters to get to the park. Okay. So that's a tricky one. Uh, you will see an example of this kind of question in the practice, maybe in a learning goal, in the review for the unit, all that stuff. But we've done one and the other ones that you're going to be asked to do are going to be very similar to this. So you've got this example, follow this example, break it up into those two parts. Again, we found the 600 all the way on its own. And then we found the diagonal part by using Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So that's how you would solve. This one was the only one that is not a multiple choice. So, you know, you can't just guess and hope that you get it right. Um, you do have to do the calculations and figure out the answer on your own. Um, but if you break it up into those two parts, hopefully it's not too bad. Okay. And again, just remember, there's an example of this one. Uh, the ones that we do are going to be very similar to this. So you've got an example. Just follow this one from this lesson. And... Um, if you have any questions, as always, make sure you reach out to me. And otherwise, um, good luck with the practice. Again, just looking back before uh, before I um, stop the video, uh, the other questions were all multiple choice. So again, keep in mind that when it's multiple choice, you can often eliminate some answers, right? And that can really help you. But all four of these questions were all about Pythagorean theorem. And they are all specific kinds of questions. So hopefully when you're doing the practice, you can use these as examples of how you can solve uh, the questions that you're going to have moving forward. Okay, good luck.